the story of mankind is deeply coupled with unpredictability knowing about uh, the future knowing it from the past trends knowing it based on the behavior of the players and the elements in the ecosystem has been one of the main inquiries that all of us are engaged in we use scientific tools engineering tools analytical tools we apply our intuition uh, judgment to a prediction of uncertainty even astrologers make a lot of money by banking on the some amount of predictability about the uncertainties of future at the core of it lies data and this data is the subject of our discussion today how data has evolved from a simple uh, element of statement of facts to the huge information what we know as data is uh, only 10% numbers and 90% philosophy if you take how many cars are moving uh, that will not provide you a uh, meaningful but if we go into some philosophic component of it that how many of them hearing from side to side how many of them are exceeding speed limit we are leading to something meaningful the earliest application of data was found in census earlier a census used to be only counting and at best a gender uh, tag was attached to it but today census is a multi dimensional data set which includes demographics history origin the caste the color the income census is one example of how data is used for policy making and uh, making lives of the citizenry better in london when cholera came there was a study as type of household the type of street type of other taken and they were correlated people who rise who live in high rise buildings have a less chance of getting cholera it has nothing to do with the pure air in the high rise buildings but it came because of the biases originally cholera was not conclusively determined as a waterborne disease it was only known as a airborne disease so the bias was to find out ways to prove this hypothesis defense human catastrophes disease control telecom fault repair they collected a lot of data because they wanted to optimize on resource deployment they wanted to predict and they wanted to get greater customer satisfaction one strange example insemination of the cows now it was observed that when cows are ready for insemination they get into a stage called their heat prior to that there is there is a large number of movements by the cow there is a lot of instability in its uh, behavior the snorting movement of the head and based on this dairy farmers they determined that the cow is in heat and insemination must be made now this took a lot of time lot of observation with data where sensors were tied to the legs of the cows and cameras were fixed overhead and this through an iot technology this camera data and the movement data are coordinated it was found that there is 300 400% increase in the efficiency of insemination data must be used to get information information must be put together to get knowledge knowledge must be assimilated for getting wisdom great scientific theories have all its root in data and design of data collection has a bearing on the effectiveness and the analytical capability of the data scientist today uh, data collection is not constrained by the ability to key in data earlier there was large uh, punching machine operators who used to take pieces of data and uh, prepare punch cards so that computers could process it with natural language processing with uh, on source data collection with iot technologies which can seamlessly connect entry points uh, the uh, 
interaction points like vending machines or car driving, traffic signals. It has become very, very easy to not just collect data, put them into a computer readable format. Because this has become easy, now the amount of data collected has grown many, many times. The other important thing, revolution in the telecom sector. Earlier data was to be transported. The storage uh, used to be very voluminous. Now there is an encryption and decryption at both the ends. And software is stored at the endpoints so that data could travel and uh, get processed at the endpoint. This is how the video streaming, uh, you, you see Netflix or a Prime video, essentially a software sits and data in small packets are transported and processed in your own computer without you noticing it and it gets streamed to you. The most important thing in addition to telecom revolution is the availability of computers. In 55, they say UK had total of 23 computers, 5,500 computers in 1970. Now there are hundreds of millions of computers every one of the smartphone has much computing power as compared to probably a big computer 50 years back exponential growth of computing power and growth of the world wide web cloud computing where you do not have to have bulky computing power and you can do paper use do not have to buy software you do not have to buy hardware if you have just data you can do it in any which way you like. The invention of data lakes in which you don't have to uh, transform a data after you have extracted it. You can simply extract it and load it and transform it as and when it is required. Collecting data, storing data, processing data and visualizing data are largely solved. Like with every prosperity there is always a bag of O's and we are now dealing with data privacy, data tenancy, data colonization, consumption of APIs bringing high level technology from a cloud based platform and the progress in the internet and uh, things like 4G, 5G, local broadband, on the street broadband, all this coming into play will be the determinant of how we appreciate and consume data. Thank you very much.